There. I am going to show you today some of the options that there are in GoToMeeting. So I'm going to try to display both the GoToMeeting um, teacher side and also what the kids would see um, on the iPad. So we'll give that a shot. First thing I did was open the GoToMeeting screen. I get this dialog box and um, I'm going to click this meet now. You may use this schedule meeting since you have the same meeting time every day, uh, but I'll just use the meet now. So it starts up the session and opens up this dialog here and plays this lovely audio each time because you're the first caller that comes into the session and um, you'll see that your mic is being shared here. I'm going to mute that just by simply clicking on it because I don't want to have two things feeding back at the same time. Um, this is your control pane. So you would see you can share your webcam simply by clicking on that. And once it's shared, it turns to the screen box. You'll be able to see your face here. You can minimize that if you want to get rid of it. But that means that the other people will still be able to see it. Uh, so I'll keep that up just so you can see what the screen looks like. And then if I want to share my desktop, I can click this share my screen button. So when others are logged on, now they'll be able to see your desktop, whatever's, whatever is there. On the student side of things, they would be able to use their iPads to share their screen. This is kind of hard backwards. But I downloaded the GoToMeeting app. They would simply open up that app. And there you're given a meeting ID, which is right here. You can share that with the title tutor via email. So you would have to set this up, you know, a few minutes in advance to be able to share this meeting ID number because the students will have this dialog box that's kind of tough to see and this is the problem you were having on Skype. Uh, they'll have this dialog box here where they'll have to type in that meeting ID. So I'm going to do that quickly. And the unfortunate thing about this, this is definitely one of the um, maybe downfalls or challenges of this of this app is that that meeting ID is going to be different every time so you'll have to share that with the tutor every day so once it's tap, uh, typed in there we'll just tap the join that's what the kids would have to do and that should get rid of that annoying beeping okay because now there's somebody else on the line so this is also me I'm Bob all right and now that others are on the meeting they can see, you can see, they can see my screen without all the GoToMeeting stuff that's actually there. Um, and they can also share their mic, they can share their webcam, and they can see who is there in the meeting. So I'm going to open up the mic here, and you'll be able to hear me twice, like that. I can share my webcam from this side simply by tapping the camera. And then I have to also press this green button. And once I do that, my webcam is being shared. And you should be able to see me in a second here. Still connecting. I think it's just because I have so many <laughs> high bandwidth things open. While that's generating, I haven't had it take that long. I'm not sure quite why it's taken so long. Um, but since the students won't be in the exact same room with you with all kinds of stuff open like I have now, their, their screen will generate a lot faster than that. I've it, Typically takes a couple seconds for it to work. I'm not sure exactly why, um, but I'll move on from that. 
Um, a, another nice feature of GoToMeeting from the teacher side is you can set a different presenter. So right now it's myself and my other ego, Bob, over here. So I can make Bob the presenter and it'll ask me, do I really want to do this? And I can just click OK and I can change that back at any time. Oh, there, my screen finally generated. And this is what the students will see share from a cloud, which you probably won't use. They can browse to something on the internet or they can use this whiteboard, which I think is really cool. I think you'll use that. So let's check that out. So when they click that, they'll have to press this play button to enable that to be live. And once they enable that to be live, you see it pop up on the screen there. And then they can just use their finger to write some stuff when they stop writing. It comes up on the screen. They can change to a plethora of colors there to differentiate. You know, there's some more writing that'll pop up. Um, if they, this is one thing I didn't find incredibly intuitive, that the erase is this back undo button. It's a back arrow there. And then when you want them to stop sharing and you want to make, um, I forget the students' names that you have, but if you want to make a different student the presenter, you would just double click on their name on this side pane here. Or, sorry, right click on their name and you would make me the presenter, make the presenter again. And then I've taken back control. And then I'll show my screen again. So, again, it's kind of nice because you still have control, but the students can do a few more things and you won't have to show your screen that way. You can actually just right there. Um, another neat feature is that, you know, the whole time you can share your screen and still have your video up like I do. Um, I won't have the problem of, you won't have the problem of the iPad video freezing like I'm having. Um, and yeah, that's a, a brief, a brief overview. Oh, the other nice thing that you can do since you have a computer in that room, and this is something else I wanted to share, is that the students could also log in on the computer and maybe you just use that as your webcam and you can see um, whatever they're doing and then they can use this toggle bar to kind of hide the videos and see your whole screen much more easily. Um, but they don't have to do that. Um, but the thing that's pretty neat if they have a computer is you can use this tool here to give control of the mouse on your screen to somebody else. Uh, you can't do that from the iPad, but you can do that from another computer. So if my Bob was Bob on a laptop or on a iMac, which is what I think you said you had, you could give them control and then they can control the mouse. So you could have a smart board file up there with some of your sorts that you were showing and they could literally take, click, and drag something where you wanted it to go, like uh, I think you were doing B and K sounds. So they could drag the bat to the B, they could drag the kite to the K. And that would be a really neat way to kind of be able to share everything at once. So it makes it much more interactive. Uh, the trial is fairly inexpensive, I believe. It's $19 a month, um, and that enables you to have one presenter and five um, attendees at a time, which is more than you know you would need. Um, but you could also have uh, two, at two presenter licenses with five additional attendees, and that is $38 a month. Um, the difference between those two you know, with the two presenters, you could have a student, two students presenting at one time, or you could have yourself and the student be a presenter at the same time, and that would allow um, two 
allow the two students to be able to write at the same time. With the one presenter, you can only allow one student to use that whiteboard feature at a time. Um, so, you know, there are some pros and cons there, but it, it does cost a little bit more money for the two presenters. But on the plus side there, you would be able to have both of them write at the same time. So some things to think about, a brief introduction to the whole thing. Um, hope you liked what you saw. Let me know and um, we can kind of take it from there. All right. Thanks. Hope you're having a good weekend.